Well, something I thought would be fun to do in today's video is uh, go around and just uh, give you an update on what's growing in my various zones. And so the three zones uh, I'm talking about are um, the basement nursery, what's in the greenhouse, and what is sitting in the outside nursery areas ready to go into the beds. Um, I can uh, the stuff that's actually in the beds would not be a very exciting update because I haven't had time to get things into the beds as much as I'd like. It's warming up here. It's it's go time. It's definitely time to get stuff in the beds, uh, but I haven't had a chance to do a lot of that. So, so um, I'm going to talk about what's ready to go in the beds and what's in the beds kind of synonymously. Like they're the, they're kind of the same thing because unfortunately for me, they are. <laughs> I haven't gotten them all in there yet. All right. Well, let's, let's go around and take a look at, at what we've got going on around here. These are marigolds. Impatience. So pretty much what we have in here are the peppers and the tomatoes and the cucurbits, cucumbers, melons, squashes, that kind of stuff, some sunflowers. Um, my tomatoes are looking pretty scraggly here, but I still have faith that put them out, they'll, they'll clean up a bit. Uh, moved at this point I should move everything that isn't just germinating into the greenhouse from the basement nursery but what I all I've been able to move so far the zinnias the uh, which you can tell they're struggling a bit we'll see if they come back I got some more zinnia seeds to start over though because I think they just spent too much time in the basement nursery uh, the eggplants the potted up ones especially are looking like they're gonna do okay We've got petunias in here. Uh, we have uh, some marigolds and uh, some cosmos in here as well. Some of that stuff. But you saw my outdoor nursery areas are full, so I've got to get things in the ground first, then move stuff from here to outdoors, and then uh, keep moving things from the basement to in here. more things to go in the ground. We've got straw flowers and delphiniums, beets and columbines, foxgloves. Uh, more, more stuff to put in the ground. More lettuces, more chard, more beets, more kale, uh, more broccolis, lots of broccolis, uh, bok choy. Lots of broccolis. This is Broccoli Avenue here. Uh, some poppies, um, some grasses, some salvia. We still have some lisianthus here that can go in the ground. One of the topics I thought uh, we could address is what is eating and chomping away at my plants around here at this particular time of the year. So we're in uh, late spring, it's mid-May. No matter what controls I use, I expect I will lose or share my plants with the critters out here. Also, I don't consider myself an, a gardening expert and doing these videos and kind of talking to you all. I'm just a guy who's doing things the way I know how with some research, primarily from watching other YouTube gardeners and some experimentation on my own. You know, I have been doing it for years and uh, you can see some of my results, but I'm hesitant to attempt diagnosing exact issues for you all because I, I, I'm, I, can, I think I can only share what I've actually seen here, what I've experienced, because I don't have that kind of expertise. Um, and hopefully what I see and what I experience, there's some commonality in what you see is going on for me and what, and what you have that can be useful to you. So right now, while it's uh, still cool and wet, uh, my very top pest is gonna be the garden slug. Um, and you can find all kinds of tricks and tips for reducing slugs and gardening. Um, I frankly just use Sluggo. Uh, I think it makes a big difference in the amount of slug pressure that I have around here. Uh, this time of year, I think uh, the rain will kind of wash it away. Uh, so I wait until it's gonna be mostly dry uh, for like the next 24 hours or so, and then I apply it. And right now that's working out to be every couple weeks or so. 
Uh, you can get Sluggo at Costco. You can also get it at most many nurseries. It's You can Amazon it. Uh, the price is great at Costco, but they only carry it for a short window. So I stock up during this time of year, so I have it to cover the rest of the year as well. I'll mention that uh, the cabbage moth is also a considerable eater in my garden, but they don't come around quite yet until it's warmer in the garden. Uh, they wait for sunny days. You know, the sun's out right now, so maybe I might see the one-off moth, but they're not out there yet. The other primary muncher in my garden at this point is rabbits. They're cute, but they will mercilessly mow down the tops of veggies. I've seen posts and forums of pictures of other people's gardens where the damage they've caused to large veggies, like taking a big chunk out of a cabbage or something, but I've never actually had that happen. In my garden, they exclusively go after the baby start plants. They'll just chomp off the top. And maybe I have particularly lazy rabbits, or maybe they're sophisticated and they only want microgreens. I don't know, but uh, they destroyed nearly half my brassica plantings last year before I realized that's what was happening. So my control for that is a fence that I put up around part of my uh, veggie beds, the area I call the central beds. My understanding is that a fence like that has to be at least two feet high, and the holes have to be small enough that the rabbits can't squeeze themselves through. Although so far this season, I've left the entry gates to that fenced off area open, and I haven't seen any sign that the rabbits have done the work to like figure out their way in. So it seems like simply uh, putting a little bit of an obstacle there has initially deterred them. Like I said, my rabbits seem to be kind of lazy in this garden, but I suspect it's also because they've got a lot of options around here. So they're not doing a whole lot to like get into things at least not yet. I'm sure there's other things chomping at roots and my plants around here, but right now at this time of the year, the slugs and rabbits are the only two things that are significant enough to really come to my attention and cause me to do anything. Uh, holes in leaves or small cutouts of leaves, I would assume are the slugs. While if the top of a plant is just chomp, chomped off or chomped off, that I usually think is the rabbits. Now, when I visited gardens in the UK, birds actually seemed to be a significant issue to the point that they would put nets around their veggie beds to keep them out of things like kale and lettuce. We have a lot of birds around here, mostly crows, but there's a few other kinds. There's a good diversity here of colors and song. I'm not a bird guy, and I have so I haven't tried to identify what different kinds we actually have. Uh, but I, but you know, my point is I've never actually noticed any real plant damage from the birds here. I, I think they do dig up or pull out seeds when I plant sometimes, and together with the birds doing that and slugs attacking the kind of the very first sprout from a seed, I try to avoid direct seeding anything as much as possible. The only thing I direct seed at this point are things like carrots and parsnips. I raise all my things as starts as you've seen in my videos, and uh, that helps me deal with that issue. And so I, I don't have the birds uh, damaging things, damaging greens. What I've seen in others' gardens when the birds are damaging things like greens is that they're like poking holes in the greens. But again, I haven't really seen that in my garden. I did recently see on a Facebook gardening group that's local to the North Pacific Northwest here that somebody was dealing with bird damage on their leafy greens. So it sounds like it does happen here in the Pacific Northwest, but I've just never had it, at least not yet. You know, I didn't have rabbits eating my starts till a year ago either. So it could very well happen that birds will attack my leafy greens in the future, but perhaps the veggie levy birds just haven't figured out where my space is or recognize that it's a good eating sp space yet. Maybe that, that's what's going on. I don't know. Uh, the posted comment that inspired this segment mentioned that they try to fence. So I would just say make sure the fence is high enough. Um, and also they mentioned that their tomato plants with the tops had been munched off. Now, I've never had that problem, knock on wood, but I've never had... Uh, much of a pest problem with tomatoes here at all, except for maybe late in the fall, I'll find a bite taken out of the fruit occasionally, which I've assumed is some sort of rodent or squirrel. But even that's not that common around here. Uh, one reason that I don't think I've had kind of tomato problems this early in the season, while well, I know that I haven't, is because I feel it's too cold to have tomato plants in the ground right now. So I just haven't been in that scenario. My tomatoes are still growing in pots. I've moved, I'm moving them from the basement nursery up to the greenhouse uh hopefully later this week or next week uh i you know and by the time they're put in they'll be a good six to ten inches if not a foot tall and as, as i told you my lazy rabbits aren't going to go after things that big so i don't know that rabbits would be the problem i don't know that they would eat a solening say like a, a a pepper or a or an eggplant or a or a tomato start um and uh 
I think a whole squad of slugs could mow down a tomato start, but again, my, my tomatoes are usually bigger before they go in the ground, so that's not something I've had to deal with before. Um, and what I've seen even, you know, when later, you know, when slugs are out, I do have tomatoes out, they, they tend to not, slugs don't tend to bother things like my peppers, eggplants, tomatoes. They tend to go after the brassicas and the lettuces and, and stuff like that is what I found in my garden. But I have occasionally found some slugs on tomato stuff, but they'll go after like more of the fruit. Well, finally, I'm in an urban garden and I actually did have a deer wander on this property a, a couple of years ago, but it's really rare here. So those of you who are in the country, you may have that to contend with. My understanding is that those deer pretty much like about everything. They'll come along and chomp the tops off things too. So that could be an issue for you if you're in an area that has deer. Unfortunately, I don't, I, I can't give any advice on deterring deer. I would, I would Google that and look for other YouTube videos on that because being in this urban garden is just not an issue that I deal with. All right, well, I hope some of that was helpful for some of you, if not for the poster, maybe somewhat for the poster, but also for the rest of you to compare to what's going on in your gardens. And uh, please, yeah, keep the comments coming so I can uh, have good stuff to talk about here. Well, this is the first week in several months where I haven't started any seeds. We've taken a quick break from that. We'll be back to it soon for the fall garden at very least. In the ground, we've planted asters, petunias, lisianthus, and nicotiana. Really, you've seen the outdoor nursery and all the plants that we have there. All of that could go into the ground. We just haven't put it in because of running out of time. Hey, so I saved my own marigold seed, and I'm super happy about how this is turning out. This seed uh, that I have here, this was saved from... Uh, actually, I saved it a couple of years ago. I think I may have saved some last year as well, but m the bulk of it was saved two years ago. And um, in terms of saving marigold seeds, these were from French marigolds. Um, that's I love to plant French marigolds in mass. Historically, I've planted them around tomatoes and as borders on some of my vegetable beds. And I just, they're easy to grow and they look beautiful and they were easy to save seeds. So in the fall, I would wait for when it was dry because uh, you know, in the fall here, it gets kind of wet, but I'd wait for a dry day and then just go around and grab the seed heads and rub these, uh, I would just rub rub these out of the seed head, these little uh, lengthwise things, these are the seeds, and, uh, and then I kept them. And so then what I did, what I've been doing this year in order to plant them is, when I plant them in the cell trays, I will plant them four or five seeds in a cell tray thinking, you know, these are home safe seed. I don't know what their germination rate would be. And that's worked out pretty well. I'm getting two or three um, seedlings popping up per cell tray. So multi sown has worked here. And my experience is that the marigolds are actually pretty vigorous in terms of growing or they're pretty forgiving. So I think, you know, rather than just going around and pinching out, you know, two or three of the, the marigolds and leaving one per cell tray, I think I'll just be able to pop the whole plug and kind of separate them the way I might like lettuce or broccoli and then put them in the ground that way. And I think they'll go. I think that's what I've done in prior years. So um, I'll keep you updated. You can see how this how this goes. But I don't, you know, if you follow me around here, you know, you may know or you may have seen that I don't actually save a lot of seed. Most of my, you know, I haven't done a lot of seed saving. Aside from the French marigolds, the only other seed that I've saved has been uh, quinoa. I did that a couple of years ago where I saved quinoa seed, then broadcasted it the next year over one of the beds, and it that worked out nicely. Um, but aside from those two, I haven't I haven't got, gotten into a full on seed saving program. So it's uh, I'm kind of dipping my toe in it slowly here, and it's nice to have some success. Here's what I harvested this week: asparagus, lettuce, radish, spring onions, purple broccoli, beets, and beet greens.